Welcome, we're glad you're here to worship with us on February 5th, 2017 at Orientals Catholic Church in Chicago, Illinois.
is, lead us to the glory of your everlasting life. Amen. Keep us, your family, safe, O oh Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, we may be defended always by your protection. We ask this to our Lord and brother Jesus, who lives and reigns and loves forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <coughs>
greedy from the fruit of the prophet. Thus says the Lord, share your bread with the hungry, shelter the oppressed and the homeless, clothe the naked when you see them, and do not turn your back on your own. Then your life shall break forth like the dawn, and your womb shall quickly be healed. Your vindication shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove from your midst oppression, false accusation, and malicious speech, if you bestow your bread on the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, then light shall rise for you in the darkness, and the moon shall become for you like midday. Word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, proclaiming the mystery of God, I did not come with sublimity of words or of wisdom, for I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling, and my message and my proclamation were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of spirit and power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Amen. The word of the Lord. Your light must shine before others, 
that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. And my sisters and brothers, this is indeed the good news of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Fish, you know, in the Caribbean is all often 
preserved in salt. I remember once getting a ham from relatives down south, and it was, my mom put it in a pot of water for a couple of days. To, it was in brine, preserved in brine, and let the, the salt come out of it. Some of the old timers would probably know more about that. So it had all kinds of unusual uses. Uh, and, and the prime biblical religious use of salt, it's almost unique religious use, whenever you offered sacrifice, when you went to the temple to Jerusalem or some big event or some big thing you wanted to pray for, you would make a sacrifice. You would take grains or buy a turtle dove or some little animal, lamb is the highest form, and give them to the priest and that animal would be burned at the altar. But they always put salt into the fire. They believed that salt made it hotter and somehow intensified the fire. And so the animals of the sacrifice could be consumed. Now, I'm trying to figure out what Jesus is trying to say to us today. Light be salt and light. Light is pretty evident. And Isaiah talks about it in the psalm, you know, if you, you will shine with light if you reach out to the poor, break bread with the poor, lavishly give to the needy. <coughs> but I wonder, when I get a chance to ask him too, I'm going to say, what is the idea we should be salt? <laughs> I'm not quite sure what he's uh, aiming at there. Uh, but it does share like with light um, that we can preserve faith and enhance faith, which is food to us in a way, spiritual food. We can enhance it and preserve it by caring for others. Uh, you know, the hungry, the sick, the imprisoned, the broken, all of them. The more we reach out to them, the more we are preserving and enhancing our faith and their faith. Just what Isaiah and the psalmist said about uh, light. The same thing is true for salt, I guess is the, the parallel there. Um, and then looking at light, it's going to be featured in Lent. As the days start out rather dark and we go into the spring, the days get longer and longer and brighter. Uh, and there's a lot about darkness and light. And the big culmination is Easter, the night before Easter, around midnight, we light a bonfire and bring in the big uh, Easter candle. And that we proclaim the light of Christ. And then everyone in church has a little candle and we take a light from that one candle. And, you know, it's, it's obvious that it's worth reflection. The light, the fire, and the candle is never diminished. No matter how many, hopefully it'll be 100, 200 people here taking the light from that candle. But the fire keeps burning brightly in this area. Uh, when they talk about light, they talk about candles or little, uh, what do you call it, oil lamps. That was their source of light. It's never diminished, and, uh, and the light is, is always inviting to come into a room when we put candlelight on special occasions. It's, it's a gentle, inviting light. Uh, shines out in all directions at the same time. There's a lot of, a lot of meaning associated with light. Um, and one of my uh, favorite uh, images about light is that of the lamp lighter. Uh, just squeezing around here, I don't think anybody comes from the days of lamp lighters. When, I don't know when electricity started to be common in the turn of the century or the 20s, I don't know, street lights were all of a sudden on. Uh, but prior to that, nights were dark and dangerous and sort of depressing. So they devised lamp lighters. There would be posts all through the city streets, and they'd get a person to come around as soon as it got dark and light the lamp, and then move on in the dark and the shadows and light another lamp and move along and light the, the street lamps. And the idea was he was pretty much invisible, and yet he brought this great gift of light 
to people who needed it so much. Uh, and I think that's part of the image, too, that uh, Jesus intended. We are to spread light. We are to care for others, to reach out to others. And they enumerated, again, in Isaiah, uh, very in the Psalm, and even in Paul, to, light, to be a person of light is one who, who helps the shares bread and makes bread and clothes the naked, all of those things. But to do it without being noticed. Uh, you know, Lamp Lander didn't want to be noticed himself, but he wanted to provide others. That's the highest form of, of being light in the world and of being doing good in the world. There's an ancient saying, the best good that you do is that which no one knows about. without any attention for yourself. And so our challenge today is to hear those words that we are to be salt and light and to reflect that that's a challenge to us and God's grace will enable us to do it and we will uh, do it more and more until those words are not uh, puzzling or complicated really get to appreciate what Jesus said. May the good Lord bless all of us to be true light to each other, to be true salt for all we need. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to conclude with that. <laughs> We're going to let the Pope have the last word. Frankie the Pope, as he's sometimes called. Uh, last year was the year of mercy. And that's what this light and salt is about, to be people who manifest mercy. And he and many others last year went over the, the corporal works of mercy. In your catechism, as the children downstairs are doing right now, and as you and I did, some nun maybe beat this into us, hopefully, be a little bit of any of what are the corporal works of mercy? And again, this is what produces salt and light. If we uh, practice the corporal works of mercy and the spiritual works. And uh, Pope Francis has named them for us and wants us to us. Uh, so paying attention to that should be helpful. To feed the hungry, to give drink to the thirsty, Super Bowl day, that doesn't mean <laughs> drinking too much. That ever needs qualification. Be the hungry, drink for the thirsty, to clothe the naked, to shelter the homeless, to care for the sick, to visit the sick, to visit the imprisoned, to bury the dead, and the spiritual works of mercy, to convert sinners to instruct the ignorant, to advise the doubtful, to comfort the sorrowful, to bear wrongs patiently, to forgive injuries, and to pray for the living, excuse me, pray for the living and the dead. And again, if we are able to do that more and more in our life, uh, we will know more and more what it is to be salt, to be light. Carlos. Please stand for our profession of faith. Use the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God of God, light of light, true God of true God, begotten God of man, consubstantial of the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified in the pledge of He suffered death and 
was there and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to the judge living and dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and Lord of God, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now prayerfully lift up our concerns, our needs, those of one another, especially for those who are troubled.
bring us sisters and brothers and our offerings and sacrifices joined with those of Jesus will be acceptable to God our Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, through Christ Jesus. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he brought us everlasting life. Now in the choirs of heaven, we sing out the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be here to serve you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ Jesus, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread through the world. Bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Blaise our Bishop, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising, and all who have died in your mercy. Have mercy on us, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through Jesus, with Him, in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Lamb of God, who takes away our sins, the sins of all the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
For God, who is the will that we be partakers in the one God, who will that we be partakers in the one bread and the one cup. Grant that we may be so to live that they one in Christ Jesus. We may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. We ask this to our Lord and brother Jesus, who lives, reigns, and loves forever and ever. Amen. Now I invite anyone whose birthday it is this week, last week, or the coming week, birthday or anniversary. Thank you. And somebody's got a one in the bag. I think birthdays really are about mothers. This young man didn't do much for He caused a lot of problems with the day of his birthday. His mother did the birthday. She, she gets part of the blessing too. Feast. They correct me on everything. 
Feast and Heritage Celebration entitled A Historical Account of the Black Gospel Singing for Every Mountain. <coughs> Sunday is going to be Sunday, May, February 19th. Uh, Soul Food Fest will start at 1 and the Heritage Celebration is at 3. It's going to take place right here at the Holy Angels Church. The presenters will be uh, Father George Clemens and Father Andrew Torma. So please, uh, there's no admission fee. There will be a generous love offering accepted, okay? Uh, I'm finished. Do the Do the You want to explain what we did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's the name of our Cardinal Archbishop? Blaze. Friday was the feast of St. Blaze. It's his feast day. So if he calls you up today, be sure to say happy feast day. Uh, and the tradition of the church is on the feast of St. Blaise is to bless our throats, to bless our whole body, and particularly throats is something we uh, very important to breathe God's good air, we, uh, take in our food, our drink, our wine and water, and we sing, sing forth from music and say our prayers and communicate love and care to one another. It's all through our throat. And the reason we do that, the story behind it is that uh, one day a young man was eating fish and he was joking at home. And St. Blaise... No, that's him.
to keep holy angels and America in your daily prayers.